working through reading the Bible in a year, and you're on track, and uh, it's February, but you're, you're, you're still on track. You're there, right? Have any, has anybody approached Leviticus yet? I hear chuckles. Does that mean yes? Isn't it, isn't it a fun read? Yes. <laughs> all, of, all of the uh, specificities are uh, entertaining. As I was working my way through the first few chapters of Leviticus, I see Jesus. There are five offerings preserved in detail of how they are to be given, what they are for, who, is it, who it is to serve, what is to be supplied, and I see Jesus. Leviticus chapter 1 recalls a burnt offering. And the burnt offering, higher animal on the altar. It focuses on our adoration for the Lord. It is a praise offering. And the entire animal, with a certain descriptor, was to be burned up. Was it the common animal, or was it the one without defect? It was the one without defect. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, all of himself, was put on the cross. He gave his entirety for you and for me. He wasn't burnt, but the essence of the burnt offering in that all of it was for the Lord, was exemplified with Jesus on the cross. In Leviticus chapter 2, the meal offering or the grain offering focuses on the blessing from God, His favor and provision for man. What kind of flour, what kind of grain was used in this offering? Only the best, the finest. In John chapter 6, verse 48, Jesus declares himself our bread of life, does he not? So I'm working my way through Leviticus. Jesus, I can see exemplified in the burnt offering that he gave all of himself on the cross. The finest of flour is given in the meal offering, the grain offering, and he is our bread of life. The next offering, Leviticus chapter 3, is the peace offering. And in the best way that I can summarize it, it's about communion with the Lord, recognizing that he is the one who brings all peace. I believe believe it's, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. I'm going to back it up some. I'm going to to read from verse 11. So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcised by those called the circumcised, which is done in the flesh by human hands. At that time, you were without Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our, what does it read in your translation? Peace? For he is our peace who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. We're three offerings in, and I see Jesus exemplified in all of them. Now here comes the next one. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 20. Details what the sin offering is for. And it reads, uh, yeah, verse 20. 
He is to offer this bull just as he did with the bull and the sin offering. He will offer it the same way, so the priest will make atonement on their behalf, and they will be forgiven. Then he will bring the bull outside the camp and burn it just as he burned the first bull. It is the sin offering for the assembly. Was it just a, any regular old bull, just any regular old animal, if it was available, suffice for this sin offering? No. The best of the best was for this offering. And it was for sin. The blood, something cover over for a time the sin of the trespasser, right? Does that sound familiar with a New Testament, with a New Testament theme? It should. Jesus was our sin offering. He was the best of the best. He was perfect. And his blood covered over all of ours. The fifth offering. The trespass offering. Recorded in Leviticus chapter 6, this offering focused on the sins that were committed knowingly against man, man against man. The sins were confessed, restitution was required for the wronged one. Can we go to Acts chapter 3 for just a moment? I'm going to start reading in verse 14. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer released to you. You killed the source of life whom God raised from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in His name, his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. So the faith that comes through Jesus has given him this perfect health in front of all of you. Verse 17, And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, just as your leaders also did. In this way, God fulfilled he had, what he had predicted through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Therefore, repent and turn back so that your sins may be wiped out. Did Jesus do that for us? Yes, he did. I don't think it is inappropriate to see Jesus in every single one of these offerings. As we're making our way through the rest of the Old Testament together, I hope we're all striving in that effort. I think Jesus is going to reveal himself nearly on every page that we read. But at this moment right now, Jesus is revealing himself through these emblems. But to those of us who are Christians, they're not just things that represent Christ. They're his body and his blood. And we have the opportunity, the privilege, to eat and drink these things. Because Jesus was our five-in-one offering. That has a, a weight. Um, I don't do well with blood. The smell of it, if you've ever been around it, it's not enjoyable. I can only imagine, because I haven't been in a place where that is an actual uh, reality, but I can only imagine what an altar would have smelled like, what it would have looked like, preparing the offering, what that scene would have been. I'm imagining the scene of the cross as the offering for the world was hanging there for you and for me. He did it willingly. He was without defect. And he did it because he loved us. 
So as we take this bread and this cup, I hope all of us are grateful for the five-in-one offering that was hanging there on the cross. Thank you.